Hey everyone, Ricky's in Iceland drinking whale dick beer, so I got Nick to fill in. Welcome to News Dump, where we round up all the stories from the entertainment world that we actually care about and think that you will too. Minus, of course, the news that we've already covered this week in other videos, like the fact that Lil Tom Holland will be pulling double duty for Sony as both Spider-Man and now Nathan Drake in the Uncharted movie franchise, and that Zack Snyder has stepped down from directing the few remaining scenes of Justice League, but for a really sad reason to deal with a family tragedy, handing over directing duties to Joss Whedon. Also that Universal is officially launching its own dark universe in order to compete with the MCU and franchises like Fast and Furious and Transformers, using the old movie monster properties they've been sitting on for 80 years, like Dracula Frankenstein, Creature from the Black Lagoon, and the upcoming Mummy. Really hot properties. With <sighs> that out of the way, here's some new news. Remember how the Terminator franchise refuses to die, yeah. despite each new Terminator movie being worse than the last, further diluting the sci-fi action brilliance of the first two movies that James Cameron made? Yep. Of course you do. Terminator 3 was meh, Terminator Salvation was generic as fuck, and Terminator Genesis was so terrible both creatively and financially that plans for a whole new trilogy were scrapped within months of its release. And yet, this being Hollywood, where a shitty sequel is still somehow favorable to a decent original, it wasn't long before a new plan for a new Terminator franchise reared its cybernetic ugly head. You just nah. can't kill the cyber dog. <laughs> the, 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 the... They just lie in wait. There's yeah. always, they're like buried in the code somewhere. You they're can like freeze Skynet. Them, crush them with the car, put them in the lava. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Anyway, I'll this time- I'll be back. He'll, he said he'd be back, and he has never not been back. This time, though, the news managed to be somewhat more promising than usual. Uh, back in January, James Cameron got the rights back to the Terminator. So you see, back when he was just some young nobody trying to get his film career off the ground, he sold the rights to the Terminator to a producer for just one dollar in exchange for the guarantee that he would get to direct the movie. It was a hell of a gamble, not advisable for any of you young screenwriters, but he actually got to prove himself as a director and then go on to make shitloads of money. So it worked out pretty well for him. And uh, he even got to come back and write and direct Terminator 2, which ended up being not only probably the best sequel ever made, but also one of the best action movies ever made. That's true. I mean, no one can forget the scene with the roses and the shotgun and whatnot. Still though, with Terminator 2, he told what he felt was a complete story. So he moved on to do other things. But the Terminator, on the other hand, completely out of his control, went on to do its own thing as well. Mostly terrible things. But that original $1 Terminator bargain actually came with an expiration date. 2019. 35 years later, which at the time in 1984 might as well have been an eternity. It was the future, man. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, sure, 2019, yeah. Y2K. But here we are, 2019 is fast approaching and James Cameron is looking to continue the franchise, this time on his own terms. Yeah. He's a shoot it all. <laughs> Terminator's blue this time, he's got a tail, he fucks with it. He's just there in, in VR and he's like, yeah. I could see it, I could see. And we're gonna shoot at the Mariana Trench. Tip to top. So of course, <laughs> James Cameron, he has his hands a little bit full right now with 18 or so Avatar movies that he's currently shooting simultaneously, six miles underwater in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. I'm kidding, but not really. He's way too busy right now. He's, he's handing over the directing duties for whatever this new Terminator movie is to someone that he trusts with his vision. Tim Miller, director of Deadpool. Okay. Right. Solid choice. And uh, the project is obviously still a couple years away from being a reality, but the latest news out of the Cannes Film Festival is that Arnold Schwarzenegger has confirmed that he has met with James Cameron and will be in the movie. Which is great, probably. Terminator Genesis was an absolute turd, but Arnold's performance as an old, worn out, grandfatherly version of good guy T-800 character was one of the movie's few enjoyable elements. Also, the entire plot was seemingly written to justify why there was a Terminator who looked like an old man. So if this 2019 Terminator movie does in fact disregard Genesis, they're going to have to come up with yet another reason why a robot designed for murder would have the skin of a man in his 70s. They never suspect an old man. <laughs> It's the they just keep cover. making it worse. Like, older? You want him older? Okay, clang, clang, clang. Although Arnold saying simply, I will be in the movie doesn't say anything about whether he'll be starring in the film or simply playing a smaller supporting role as an old leather briefcase Terminator. I like, I like the idea that, that no one expects an old man to be a killing machine. He's like walking around with a walker and then, Yeah, ha -ha, but they just Terminator. keep like retrofitting it, which is odd. It's like, let's make the car new. Now let's make the car weathered. Let's make it yeah. really weathered. How about it doesn't run at all? I'm, I'm <laughs> I don't know, this franchise is a mess already. The, the, the lore of Terminator is, irredeemable at this point. 
I think in, when, the, when these movies came out, the idea of trippy time travel wasn't completely torn to shreds. You had Back to the well, Future. Well, it's just one little time jump. Oh, yeah, no problem. And now there's been like 50 of them. And there's no continuity. There's a ton of movies that focus on time travel and time shifting and what happens when a ripple in time, what it mm -hmm. causes. And when you think about it too hard, it doesn't make your brain heart hurt. It makes you just check out. You're like, I don't care. Yeah, whatever. Okay, whatever. John Connor, if you kill him in the feud, whatever. We already yeah. tried it 14 different ways, right? But what times? if John Connor was a Terminator? And he could turn into little pieces of metal. Don't. Just transform. Fuck. Us. Anyway, uh, side note, in the same interview, Schwarzenegger also confirmed that Triplets, the sequel to 1986's Twins, is moving forward. Okay. And might even go into production this year, starring Eddie Murphy as <laughs> the third test tube brother alongside Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. Triplets. Uh, he also said that a potential reboot of Conan, starring himself, was also in the pipeline. The 80s were a very good decade for him, and in this age of sequels that we live in, he's, it makes sense. He's now gonna get to go back and play the same characters that made him famous the first time around. I this time as an old, leathery man. An old man who looks like, just like he's been in the sun for too long in yeah. all his new movies. Like, mm -hmm. I think he tries to tan up to look younger. And, and he's just... definitely had, like, he definitely had some facelifts in the 90s yeah. that are now affecting. They're showing. They're showing. <laughs> yeah. Like he's saggy, but in weird places. <laughs> he's like, no, I can't move this whole area. They just took it out. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of recapturing the magic, it looks like Jon Stewart's plan to get back in the news commentary via an animated weekly HBO series is officially canceled before it even began. The original pitch was always pretty vague, but it seemed like a decent enough idea to supplement what John Oliver has been doing with Last Week Tonight. Stewart was going to write and produce animated shorts about current events that would go to HBO Now and potentially YouTube on a daily basis throughout the week. And then those would get compiled together for a weekly broadcast on HBO so it could be enjoyed by less tech-savvy viewers. Anyway, yeah, it turns out the idea was a lot more complicated to actually achieve than anyone initially thought. Uh, HBO said in a statement, HBO and Jon Stewart had decided not to proceed with a short-form digital animated project. We all thought the project had great potential, but there were technical issues in terms of production and distribution that proved too difficult given the quick turnaround and topical nature of the material. Who knew animation took time? <laughs> <laughs> we are excited to report that we have some future projects together which you will be hearing about in the near future. So yeah, I mean, Jon Stewart still has two and a half years left on his four-year development contract with HBO, so there's a good chance he's got something else up his sleeve. We'll see. Yeah, where well, they go to the animators, like, this sounds great, everyone shook on it. Yeah. We'll get you the first cut in three years. And they're like, oh, this <laughs> Wait is a topical. Second. Let's jump over to the new trailers now, starting with the third trailer for Spider-Man Homecoming, which takes much more of a fun Guardians of the Galaxy style approach to teasing the movie. Showing Peter Parker getting his sweet new suit from Tony Stark, explaining away his frequent crime-fighting schedule as his Stark internship, and just generally being an awkward teen. We've covered the shit out of this. It comes out July 7th. It looks pretty good. Let's talk about the real Spider-Man news this week. The fucking movie poster. <whistles> MS Paint much? GIMP, I believe it's GIMP. <laughs> it's open source, anyone can use it, it's free. <laughs> It, lo it really <laughs> looks like they were, I saw someone was like, who's a uh, high school nephew to oh, yeah. crack at this bad boy? They taught us Photoshop in class today. <laughs> so anyway, previously we've seen some pretty great posters for the movie, like this one where Spidey's just chilling by the river listening to tunes. Great poster. A few others where he's just doing the usual hanging off buildings poses. But apparently those weren't conveying enough information about the movie. For example, did you know that Iron Man's in it? No. Well. Here's not only Iron Man, but also Tony Stark. Get out! Just so you don't miss out on the fact that Iron Man is in the new Spider-Man movie. Is Tony Stark Robert Downey Jr. in Spider-Man? Yeah, Robert Downey Jr. plays Tony Stark, who puts on the Iron Man suit and becomes Iron Man. Get the now heck out of here! Uh, also, uh, hey, let's not give Spidey and Iron Man and Peter Parker and Tony Stark all the attention. This movie also features Michael Keaton as the Vulture and the guy in the Vulture costume. <laughs> Uh, as well as yeah, Marissa Tomei's there, Zendaya, uh, Tony Stark's chauffeur, John Favreau, very important character. He's in the movie too, look at that. Don't forget about him. And who could forget guy wearing a beanie shooting pink sparks or something. My and favorite people, character. The tiniest, and <laughs> yeah. just so tiny in the poster, like pssst. And people are probably gonna wanna know where this movie takes place, right? Let's just put both the New York City and Washington DC skylines right there. Well now fuck, there's all this empty space next to the title, add some sparks or some shit. In fact, just put sparks or flames all over the damn thing. And poster complete! Woo! And okay, look, it's clear what they were going for here. Something like the posters for Star Wars movies which seemingly combine every single character and costume and vehicle into one image. 
but those employ some very well thought out visual compositions, and also harken back to the movie posters from the 70s when Star Wars first began. Yeah, and even then, some of them are very messy. They're messy, but, they're, yeah. slot, they're horsey, as they say in the uh, graphic <laughs> design world. Yeah, I mean, you can put a shitload of elements into one poster, but there's a right way to do it and a wrong way, and uh, this one looks like it's just not really finished. Like, they put a bunch of layers together in Photoshop to get a look at what they were working with, they were planning on trimming the fat, but then Sony's marketing department was like, POSTER NOW! And they just took whatever the most recent draft was, and there you go. Uh, anyway, of course, social media had a field day roasting this thing, and uh, many decided to take its theme and go even further with it, like uh, this one for people who still weren't sure that Robert Downey Jr. was gonna be in the movie. He's in it? Yeah, or, or this one, which really goes for the I just learned Photoshop, check this out vibe. Uh, anyway, the movie still looks like it'll probably be great. It's just a shame that in a year of superhero movie posters like this, and this, and this, we still ended up with this. Yeah. Moving on to more trailers, here's a new one for Wind River, the latest from writer-director Taylor Sheridan, who previously wrote and directed Hell or High Water and wrote Sicario. So, surprise, it's a crime thriller that takes place in a rugged and remote landscape. What? <laughs> this time it isn't West Texas or the US-Mexico border though, it's the Wind River Indian Reservation in central Wyoming, with Elizabeth Olsen starring as an FBI agent sent to investigate a murder in the wilderness who enlists the help of a local US Fish and Wildlife Service agent played by Jeremy Renner to help her solve the crime in the dead of winter. This comes out in August and has been getting some pretty good reviews at festivals, so if you like Hell or High Water or Sicario, you'll probably like uh, Wind River. Yeah. I like both of those movies yeah, a lot. Yeah, they're great movies. Hell or High Water is one of my favorites from last year, so this is like Hell or Cold Water. Could you call this the modern western? Is this this new style, the kind of desaturated, yeah, uh, dealing with kind of social issues, but in a very western way? It's like it's like the modern western. If you you take away the lawlessness of the western and replace it with like government bureaucracy yeah, and how and it's annoying, the lawlessness <laughs> of the corporate structure. Yeah, yeah. like oh, mm -hmm. you're actually not. This is out of your jurisdiction. <laughs> like, fuck. Uh, on the more comical side of extreme violence, there's a new trailer for The Hitman's Bodyguard, starring Samuel L. Jackson as the Hitman, and Ryan Reynolds as the Bodyguard. Uh, Jackson's Hitman is one of the world's deadliest, but he's now in custody and ready to testify in international court against a brutal Eastern European dictator played by Gary Oldman. Ooh. So of course, a whole lot of people want him dead before he has a chance to do that. That's where Reynolds' bodyguard comes in, and he's not too pleased to have to be guarding the life of a guy who's tried to assassinate him on 28 separate occasions. So uh, this looks like your typical explosive action buddy comedy, but starring some great actors at some beautiful locations all across Europe, so, eh, fun. Comes out August 18th. I love a movie that takes place in Europe, especially with very American actors. Yeah, American actors just like, yeah, fuck, yeah. <laughs> fuck this beautiful, picturesque <laughs> Amsterdam canal. I'm gonna blow that shit up. Why get not? out of the Get out of the bike lane, asshole. <laughs> Should've driven a car. Can we get a speedboat in Italy? You can't? Okay. Well, <laughs> ship it from America. HBO released a trailer this week for Tour de Pharmacy, a new mockumentary film from the mind of Andy Samberg about a fictional bike race in the 1980s in which every single contestant was on steroids. It's clearly a follow-up to the Samberg and director Jake Zemanski's tennis mockumentary, Seven Days in Hell. And this time, the cast is absolutely absurd. Andy Samberg, Will Forte, John Cena, Dolph Lundgren, Mike Tyson, Orlando Bloom, J.J. Abrams, Kevin Bacon, Nathan Fielder, Danny Glover, Jeff Goldblum, Maya Rudolph, and many Many more, including Lance Armstrong, what? Who is apparently now totally cool, joking about how he cheated throughout his entire cycling career. Sorry, America. <laughs> this looks like dumb fun, and with a running time of just 41 minutes, should be worth checking out when it airs July 8th on HBO. Remember that time I sold you the whole I'm a hero, and I yeah. care about cancer, and let's just joke about so how put I on fucking these, lied these my bracelets. whole career. Lance Armstrong, what a hero, he survived wow. cancer, and just through his own willpower and his, <laughs> his strength of mind, he became never, a world-class athlete. Never took steroids never. ever, except since the beginning. Yeah. And All now he's gonna joke about it? Dude, this was like five years ago. It was not that long ago. It was ago. not that long ago. Yeah, he, he showed that America could really like dominate at, a, at a, a race and a sport that we've never really been that good at before. He like really showed them, <laughs> and uh, and, and we're still proud of him. Ever since Donald Trump, people just say, well, it's not as bad as that. Yeah. <laughs> Move on so quickly. We should just elect Lance Armstrong president. You see, I mean, he gets he might it done. Win. He might he gets it done. The man has an incredible amount of drive. He won the Tour de France. <laughs> he won it. It happened. They took it away from him, but we all remember Come on he now. did it multiple times. Uh, in new Netflix trailers, there's uh, Shimmer Lake, a dark comedy about a small town sheriff hunting down three bank robbers, one of whom is actually his brother. 
Well, the, the trailer doesn't actually say anything about the most interesting part of the movie. It's told in reverse, like Memento. Uh, each scene takes place before the last one, which is not an original gimmick, but apparently critics have seen the film and say that it makes for a pretty great movie that stands out on its own. Now, this comes to Netflix on June 9th, and the trailer definitely gives off a Fargo vibe Ooh. with the whole small town and the incompetent criminals and the one decent cop trying to break the case. So if you need more Fargo than Fargo's able to give you, it looks like this might be a decent substitute. I love Fargo. So. You all caught up? I, oh no, I, I, I missed the last uh, third of the episodes. I fell asleep. Your teeth are gonna hurt. Oh. <laughs> and finally, there's a trailer for a new Netflix series called Ozark, which stars Jason Bateman as a dude who makes his living as the guy who launders money for the second largest drug cartel in Mexico. Not exactly a safe career path, especially when you got a wife and kids to look after. So when the heat gets too hot, they decide to get the hell out of Dodge and assume new identities in a remote resort community in the Ozarks. But of course, that doesn't work out completely as planned. This 10 episode series comes to Netflix on July 21st and definitely looks like Netflix's response to so many people streaming shows like Breaking Bad. It's my favorite game whenever Netflix premieres a new thing is trying to guess what, what, anal inspired yeah, what yeah. analytics set off like the <laughs> Mad Libs of making it. I heard the Netflix algorithm is terrible. Like the the fact like it's so convoluted that it never matches you up with the right content. So well, yeah, the suggestions algorithm used to be great. Now it's shit. I, if that technology applies to what show they do next, that's why there's a lot of those you just just skip on Netflix. Right? Yeah, I'm sorry guys, but yeah, it's not exactly there. Was, there was a time when every original Netflix thing you'd be like, must Let's watch. do it, man. Is and this now, the next House of Cards? Now I, I give it some time. Is this I, the I next Frontiers? It. What's the <laughs> Right? Frontiers? What's the one with uh, Jason Momoa? Oh God, no one watched? Yeah, did that it? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Nick, what's on uh, Action Figures this week? What'd you guys talk about? This week on Action Figures, uh, we did the Countdown to Doomsday, Stroke of Midnight Doomsday Clock stuff. We already kind of plugged that. Uh, some nitpicker Phil is running down the 92 Marvel swimsuit uh, issue, which I'm was- I'm sure that's aged well. It's aged terribly. <laughs> Um, I believe the quote is words, 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 and more words. Not a ton of bathing suits, just a lot of words. Do you get to see uh, Psylocke? Oh, of course. Do you, do you get to see uh, Rogue? Mary Jane Watson, Psylocke, She-Hulk. Ow! You see uh, Wonder Man, who has a nice bit of uh, taco meat yes, just right there. Something for everyone. And he's in a Speedo. Yeah. And you have a Tony Stark expose. Mm. You just get him with a mullet and his thin mustache. Progressive. Um, and next week, we're gonna be doing some Wonder Woman stuff. Mm. Um, Wonder Woman Volume 1, we're doing a rundown on that. Uh, and also we're gonna see who could beat Wonder Woman, since of all the superheroes out there, she's never died. Batman's died, never. Superman's died, the Green Lanterns have been destroyed, Hulk's died, but Wonder Woman has never been killed. So Looks who like can beat her? Got, she's got another thing coming. Watch out, Wonder Woman. <laughs> we're gonna find out who's gonna do it. Uh, that's it for this week's show. Uh, also check out this week's new Weekly Weird News and a new episode of Tugs. And uh, see you next week. Bye. Thanks for, ha thanks for having me.